Hi, I'm Steve Williamson. Thank you for watching my video about improving cognitive testing, taking the noose off the Boston naming test. It's only recently taken out and it was on there almost 40 years. Now this is a video uh, both for professionals who, who plan, research and design cognitive exams. And it's also for people who administer them to our loved ones, our youth and our seniors. Sooner or later, just about all of us, someone we love is going to need cognitive testing. So we all want these tests to be the very best they can be. I want to tell you up front, I am not a neuropsychologist. Mm -mm. Um, at, uh, but I did work for over 20 years in community mental health programs. And a lot of my clients had cognitive exams. And I'm retired now and the cognitive science and, and cognitive exams are something I think is very important for the future. But first I wanna give you a couple of warnings. Uh, the, Topics and images on this talk, they are disturbing, but they're also important to be discussed. Secondly, you're gonna notice I stutter probably worse than Joe Biden. I appreciate you putting up with it because I think that this topic really is important for all of us to talk about. This is just the spring of 2020 that the noose was finally taken out. And how a noose, a violent image like a noose, stays on a test for children and the elderly for nearly 40 years. Why was it ever on the test to begin with? Uh, the test goes to 1983. Why was it on there even then? And did it impact test scores? Did that noose impact scores among people of different ethnicities? Now, ProEd is a large, well-respected academic publisher down in Austin, Texas, but they say their noose is still psychometrically sound, and racially and culturally inappropriate. Yeah, still psychometrically sound. Uh, friends, a, a, a noose has never been psychometrically sound to be on a test for children and old people. Um, but there's uh, their website down there, proedinc.com. Um, you can go there to learn more. And it is great that noose is off the test, but we know that a noose is a lot more than just inappropriate. Different people may see that image real differently. There's a white person growing up deep south, watching Westerns on television, can easily see that image and it, uh, and it conjures uh, frontier justice, but a legal execution ordered by a judge and jury. However, an African-American, indigenous person, person of color, growing up the same time and place I did, they're likely to see that image and think of its past that's just filled with murder and lynchings. And I wonder, and I think this is something that really needs to be talked about, is could a person of color, as the test progresses and they're shown other images, could they just ever so briefly come back in their mind and flash on that noose? A few pictures down the line, maybe another part with another test, but very briefly flash back on that noose. Now as a white person, I might be able to see it once, let it go on by, go on another part of the test, not even think about it. That may be you know, kind of a privilege that we white people have about this image that people of color just don't have. 
these images do influence us. Pictures have power. Now, I want to give you an example here. The next slide I show you. The next slide, you think, what's the first thing that pops into your mind when you see this image? Yeah, today, even the color of red's got the power to excite or incite us, but grab us. And I know what most of you thought. I'm, I'm sorry, but it, it's really just an old red baseball cap from my hometown of Shreveport, Louisiana. And I put it here because it shows the power of pictures and images and how we see it and then we, we think about it and we think about it, it follows us on. Um, and this is what they've replaced that noose with, which I'm really glad that it's an improvement. They've gone from a noose to a boomerang. Now, I know a lot of you right now are probably saying, wait a minute, he said something that's on the test, he's revealed something on the test. Yeah, just Google Boston naming test and pictures and the, the internet, you can find them all over the internet. You can find the complete test on the internet, all the pictures. You can go to YouTube and watch videos of it. Everybody knows this now. And I want to raise the question though, you know, there's been this air of secrecy and not talking about what's on this test, like as if as a person with a real cognitive disorder can remember it that long and cheat on the test. <laughs> there's been this air of secrecy and that's allowed the noose to stay on the test for the past almost 40 years. Not enough people talked about it because I think if they had, that noose would have been out of there a long time ago. But it's out now, and that's progress. But okay, why a boomerang? Okay, this is what they got in common. Boomerangs and nooses both used to kill. Nooses often used to kill people of color. Boomerangs, however, they are a really skillful weapon developed by Australia's uh, indigenous people for hunting and war. And the physics on boomerang is just amazing. I want to ask though, could the, the boomerangs, could the boomerangs change the baselines in the test? Because it's a very different word and image than noose. Uh, although one is used by people of color, the other is used against people of color. But boomerang is both a noun and a verb. And it can also be a toy, which it certainly can be. But boomerang a noun and a verb. Plus, ProEd says that boomerang is a low frequency word. And is it, or, or is that a cultural misunderstanding? Because um, many boys growing up, uh, sooner or later, they see one of those boomerangs and they want one because they idea of throwing something and having it returning back to you is just so cool to a young boy. But is this a, a gender issue too? Because I don't know, do girls uh, at one point really want boomerang? Or, 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 or is this a gender issue with this image too? And of course, when used as a verb, boomerang or boomerangs means to bounce back on you. you throw something out and just bounce back usually with really negative consequences. Now I am not an expert on psychometrics or cognitive tests, uh -uh. but I worked for over 20 years with people with schizophrenia, bipolar, autism. Lots and lots of my clients took these tests. And I'm not objecting to cognitive tests or any other cognitive test. I'm only saying what other people have said about this one, the Boston naming test. And maybe I'm grumpier. I apologize. 
But if you just Google Boston naming test and noose, you'll find a number of results. I'll show you just a couple of them. Here's a 2010 study uh, from the Archives of Clinical Neuropsychology. Noose item, what's it good for? These researchers conclude 10 years ago that it ain't good for nothing, should be taken off the test. It's 10 years ago, and I'm sure there were people saying it before then. Skip forward, 2019. Love this title, No More Nooses. Replacing the Boston Naming Test in Pediatric Assessment. Uh, this is a, um, a report from Dartmouth College School of Medicine there. And they call for completely eliminating the Boston naming test, at least with children. Now, I'm not really qualified to make that call, but I do believe it's something that the field should discuss. Now, the Boston naming test is kind of like the old granddad of cognitive testing. It's been around a long time. There may be newer, more up-to-date and better cognitive tests out there. And that's what we all want, you know, the best that we can have in cognitive testing. Finally, I want to say thanks to all of y'all for watching, especially thanks to the professionals and students who work in this field, in psychology, the cognitive sciences and testing. You really do guide and hold the care and education of our loved ones. And I also think in the next five to 10 years, this is going to be a great field to be in because you're going to have some challenges and opportunities that are really unique. You're going to have the, the new discoveries about the brain and how it works and how we think. But also, you're going to have the challenge of dealing with the COVID virus in ways we don't even yet know yet or understand yet. What effect will the COVID virus have on cognitive thinking five years, 10 years down the road? You're going to be part of the professionals who figure that out. And really, from the bottom of my heart, I thank you for your work. Um, if you want to see more of my work, there's my website down there, storiesbysteve.com, storiesbysteve.com. Uh, right after uh, this slide, you'll see a slide with my academic experience. Also, you can uh, read ProEd's uh, statement on the news there at their website. And a special thanks for canstockphoto.com for the use of their noose and boomerang. Of course, those are not the ones that are really used on the test, but no, they, they work the same way. Thank you so much for uh, watching and thank you so much for your work.